Hello friends, in the last few videos, we have discussed some plant hormones like auxins, gibberellins and cytokinins. In this video, we will discuss about abscisic acid plant hormone. Under this, we will discuss about introduction and discovery of abscisic acid. Then we will discuss about its chemical nature and structure. We will also discuss about distribution of abscisic acid in plants, then its physiological effects of abscisic acid, biosynthesis of abscisic acid and at last we will discuss about abscisic acid signaling pathway. So stay tuned. So first of all introduction and discovery. It is a stress hormone. It helps plants to survive during unfavorable condition of the environment like deficiency of water, high temperature and other unfavorable environmental condition. It was first identified by Frederick T. Adicott and his co-worker. They also chemically characterized it. They studied compound in cotton fruits that was responsible for abscission and named as abscissin 2. Abscission is the natural detachment of parts of a plant, typically dead leaves and ripe fruits. It was during 1960s. In the same time period, another group identified a compound active in the initiation of bud dormancy and named it dormin. It was found that these two are same compound. Hence, later name coined as abscisic acid, that is ABA. Despite its name, it is not major regulator of abscission. It is primarily controlled by ethylene. Now, the chemical nature. It is a sesquiterpene, a terpene with formula C15H24 or a simple derivative of such a compound. It is a 15 carbon weak acid. Its chemical name is 3 methyl 5 1 1 hydroxy 4 oxy 2 6 6 trimethyl 2 cyclohexane 1 il cis trans 2 4 pentadienoic acid. This is its chemical structure. Now, distribution of abscisic acid. It is widely distributed in plant kingdom. It is naturally occurring growth inhibitor, that is, it occurs endogenously. So when and where it is synthesized? It is synthesized in nearly all plant tissues, example roots, flowers, leaves and stems. It is stored in mesophyll cells and released in response to environmental stress. It is synthesized in maturing seeds in order to establish dormancy during unfavorable condition. It is translocated from leaves to roots via phloem. Now let us see physiological effects of abscisic acid. First is geotropism in roots. Abscisic acid synthesized in root cap is translocated in basipital direction. That is from apical region to basal region. So when roots are horizontally placed, abscisic acid is pulled on lower side due to gravity. Therefore, it results in differential growth of root. Lower side due to the presence of abscisic acid growth is inhibited and upper side growth is not inhibited. This results in curvature of root. So this is the root which is horizontally placed. Abscisic acid is pulled towards the lower side due to the gravity. Abscisic acid inhibits the growth. Hence, growth is inhibited in the lower side, but it is not inhibited in the upper side. As a result of which, differential growth of both the sides takes place. Upper side, there is more growth compared to the lower side and this differential growth results in the curvature of root. This is known as geotropism in roots. That is, movement of roots towards gravity. Second is stomatal closure. During water stress, abscisic acid causes stomatal closure. So this is the stomata which is open 
when water is present guard cells are turgid in the absence of water that is during water stress abscessic acid results in stomatal closure these are the guard cells these are flaccid and the stomata is closed so let us understand this during water stress permeability of chloroplast membrane of mesophyll cells increases for abscessic acid that is chloroplast membrane of mesophyll cells are more permeable to abscessic acid abscessic acid diffuses into cytoplasm then it moves from one mesophyll cell to another through plasmodesmata and finally reaches to guard cells and causes stomatal closure so how it is possible because abscessic acid inhibits atp mediated h plus k plus ion exchange pumps in guard cells this we will discuss in detail in abscessic acid signaling pathway now some other physiological effects third it induces bud dormancy in some temperate zone trees fourth it induces dormancy of seeds during unfavorable condition fifth abscission of leaves flowers and fruits sixth it increases resistance of temperate zone plants to frost injury now let us discuss about biosynthesis of abscessic acid this biosynthesis of abscessic acid takes place in chloroplast followed by cytosol so let us see its different steps one by one First of all glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate combines with pyruvate and it is converted into isopentanyl diphosphate or in short IPP through MEP pathway that is 2 methyl erythritol 4 phosphate pathway then this IPP is converted into zeaxanthine zeaxanthine is then converted into anthraxanthine catalyzed by the enzyme zep that is zeaxanthin epoxidase anthraxanthin is then converted into all trans viola xanthin this reaction is also catalyzed by the enzyme zep now this all trans viola xanthin is either converted into neoxanthin which is then converted into 9- cis neoxanthin or all trans viola xanthin is directly converted into 9 cis viola xanthin then 9 dash cis neoxanthin or 9 cis viola xanthin is converted into xanthosin which is 15 carbon compound this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme nced This NCD enzyme is 9 cis epoxy carotenoid dioxygenase. This is most important enzyme or it is also known as the key enzyme. Xanthosin which is produced in chloroplast then enters into cytosol. Xanthosin is then converted into abscessic acid aldehyde. catalyzed by the enzyme short chain dehydrogenase reductase or in short sdr abscessic acid aldehyde is then oxidized to abscessic acid catalyzed by the enzyme abscessic acid aldehyde oxidase or in short aao in this way abscessic acid is synthesized in plants some points to remember in biosynthesis of abscessic acid first of all abscessic acid biosynthesis is one of the main factors that regulate its concentration in the tissue it is synthesized in nearly all plant tissues example roots flowers leaves and stems cellular synthesis of abscessic acid occurs in the chloroplast and partly in the cytoplasm so earlier we have seen that most of the steps of abscessic acid biosynthesis takes place in chloroplast which is then followed by cytoplasm it occurs via terpenoid pathway starting from isopentanyl diphosphate so the pathway through which abscessic acid biosynthesis takes place is actually terpenoid pathway and it starts with ipp isopentanyl diphosphate which is the precursor of this pathway 
Abscessic acid biosynthesis pathway comprise three stages. First, early reactions, in which small phosphorylated intermediates are assembled as precursor, that is IPP or isopentanyl diphosphate. This is the early reaction in which glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate combines with pyruvate and it is converted into isopentanyl diphosphate or in short IPP through MEP pathway and this is the precursor of abscessic acid biosynthesis pathway. Second is intermediate reactions which begin with the formation of uncyclized carbon 40 carotenoid phytotene that is Z xanthine and end with the cleavage of 9 dash cis neoxanthine to form xanthosine that is 15 carbon compound. Now this is the intermediate reaction or the intermediate phase in which Z xanthine is produced which is 40 carbon compound and through various steps 9 dash cis neoxanthine or 9 cis viola xanthine is produced which is then cleaved to xanthosine which is 15 carbon compound and this is catalyzed by the enzyme NCED. Third is final phase in which xanthosine moves to cytosol and is finally converted into abscessic acid via abscessic acid aldehyde as an intermediate. So in the final phase xanthosine that is produced in the chloroplast it moves to cytosol and then it is converted into abscessic acid which is 15 carbon compound via the abscessic acid aldehyde as an intermediate. So in this way abscessic acid is synthesized in plants. Reaction that is catalyzed by NCED is a rate limiting step. It leads to formation of carbon 15 compound xanthosin and a carbon 25 metabolite. So this step in which 9 dash cis neoxanthine or 9 cis viola xanthine is cleaved to xanthosin that is 15 carbon compound and a 25 carbon compound metabolite which is catalyzed by the enzyme NCED that is 9 cis epoxy carotenoid dioxygenase is a rate limiting step in the biosynthesis of abscessic acid. Now abscessic acid signaling pathway. We already know that it is a stress hormone and it accumulates during the unfavorable conditions like deficiency of water, high temperature and other unfavorable condition. It is responsible for various physiological effects. Most importantly, stomatal closure and C dormancy. We have also discussed other physiological effects. These are brought by abscessic acid signaling. So we will discuss about this abscessic acid signaling. Now key components. Every signaling pathway has certain key components. Key components of abscessic acid signaling are as follows. First ligand. It is signaling molecule. Here it is abscessic acid. Second is receptor which binds with ligand. Here it is ABA receptor. We will discuss about signaling in Arabidopsis. So the receptor is PYR slash PYL slash RCAR. Third is transcription factor which helps in transcribing genes. It is ABFs. Then inhibitor PP2C. It also acts as regulator. Now the signaling. There are two situations. First when abscessic acid is absent. In the absence of abscessic acid, PP2Cs inhibit the action of SNRK2s. Hence, no abscessic acid response. So here, abscessic acid is not present. No ligand binds to the receptor. Hence, this PP2C is free. It then inhibits SNRK2. It does not allow its autophosphorylation as a result of which 
there is no phosphorylation of downstream targets and hence no abscisic acid response. Second situation when abscisic acid is present. Abscisic acid is accumulated in response to stress, example drop, cold and salinity. Now let us see ABA signaling through this flowchart. So abscisic acid binds to receptor. This binding leads to inactivation of PP2Cs. This causes suppression of PP2C mediated inhibition of SNRK2. Now the PP2C is not able to inhibit SNRK2. Hence, it is free from inhibition. Activation of SNRK2 by autophosphorylation. So now SNRK2 is activated by the autophosphorylation and the phosphate group is provided by ATP. This phosphorylated or activated SNRK2 then mediate ABA response through phosphorylation of downstream targets. Let us see them one by one. Phosphorylation of SLAC1 and KT1 ion channels in guard cells by SNRK2s that results in stomatal closure. So this phosphorylated SNRK2s then phosphorylate ion channels like SLAC1 and KT1 and these are present in the guard cells. This results in the more movement of solutes from guard cells to the outside and hence there are more concentration of solute outside the guard cells compared to the inside as a result of which water moves from lower concentration of solute to the higher concentration of solute that means from guard cell to outside then guard cell becomes flaccid and stomata closes and this stomatal closure prevent transpirational water loss during the deficiency of water Second, ABI5 phosphorylation of SNRK2s leading to inhibition of C germination that is C dormancy. This SNRK2 then phosphorylates ABI5 which leads to C germination inhibition or arrest of C germination or in other words C dormancy during the unfavorable condition. Phosphorylation of ABFs that is transcription factor by SNRK2s activates transcription of target genes. So this SNRK2 then phosphorylate ABF which is transcription factor and hence it becomes active and then it binds to the promoter region of ABA inducible gene and leads to the transcription of target genes. Example transcription factor involved in stress tolerance. So it leads to the transcription of transcription factor which results in the stress tolerance of plant during the unfavorable condition. So this transcription factor leads to the transcription of PP2C genes. This PP2C then binds with SNRK2 and inhibits the activity and thus it acts as the negative feedback regulator. When the favorable condition returns, so there is no need for the ABA responses in this case PP2C inhibit SNRK2. Now let us understand this abscisic acid signaling once again with the help of this figure. So in the presence of the abscisic acid, abscisic acid binds with its receptor which in turn binds with PP2Cs as a result of which it is not able to inhibit SNRK2. Now this SNRK2 is free. It is activated by autophosphorylation and the phosphate group is provided by ATP. This activated SNRK2 then phosphorylates downstream targets. It phosphorylates SLAC1 and KT1 which are the ion channels which then leads to stomatal closure. It also phosphorylates ABI5 which is responsible for C germination arrest or C dormancy during unfavorable condition. It phosphorylates ABF which is transcription factor which then binds with the promoter region of the ABA inducible genes and leads to its transcription. Some of the genes that are transcribed are PP2C genes 
this PP2C then inhibits SNRK2 and hence it acts as the negative feedback regulator. It also transcribes transcription factor which are involved in stress tolerance that is tolerance of unfavorable condition. This is all for today's video. In the next video, we will start with ethylene plant hormone. So stay tuned. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.